Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to see you here. And uh, it's a pleasure to see all these boys and girls being interested not only in tadpoles, but hopefully in wider area of science. So as Mark said, I have been obsessed with this thing here on the screen. This is a tadpole, right? You recognize a tadpole. It has its head here with the eyes and the tail that's wiggling at the end. And as Mark said, the first time when I saw this under the microscope, I remember that I realized that my life is going to change because I didn't find anything else in the world to be more beautiful than this tadpole here. So where do tadpoles come from? Where do tadpoles go? Is part of the story I want to tell you today. And once upon a time, a tadpole starts with this. So a tadpole, as you all probably know, comes from an egg. As Mark said, this one egg gives rise to this beautiful structure. An egg is made of one cell. You can consider one cell as one piece of a Lego that you would use to build a castle. So it's the unit that, when assembled, generates form that are much bigger than just individual Legos. So we start with one piece of Lego, the egg, and we build this amazing structure that is completely independent, can swim in the pond, look for food, and live uh, very happily in the right environment. But this also changes. The same way as this one piece of Lego becomes this amazing tadpole, as you know, this tadpole later on becomes a frog. This process is magical to me because the information that is contained in this one piece of Lego into this one cell is the same information as in this tadpole that looks a lot like a fish, doesn't look like a frog. And then the same information is processed then to change this fish to a real frog. So how does it work? What is the information? What is the what is the code in this? And that's what has fascinated me and my colleagues for many, many years. I'm going to first tell you about this part. How do we go from this one egg to this beautiful tadpole? And in order to do that, I'm going to show you a movie, and I'm a very short movie. And I'm going to remain silent during the movie so that you appreciate the beauty and the majesty of what is going to happen in this transition. After this short movie, I'm going to come back and show you the important steps that I want you to remember so that we can move forward to the next stages. So here it goes. This is our egg, and we're going to watch this egg become a tadpole. Enjoy. How amazing was that? Now, now you understand why I'm completely obsessed by this. And now I understand why nothing, really el nothing else matters and I can continue looking at this for the rest of my life. So what did we really see? We saw this one piece of Lego, this one egg become this amazing structure. 
And in the next slide, I'm just going to highlight what happened in discrete time. So we started with an egg. Very quickly, that one became two. Then there was a ball of cells, a thicker ball of cells, and gradually the little baby tadpole and ultimately the tadpole. So these are the events that you witness in that video. And you already noticed something in this scale is that if you look at the time, things happen very fast. You go from this one cell, the egg, one unit of Lego, to this tadpole that is made of 40 million cells. 40 million cells is the entire population of Spain. So you go from one entity to 40 million, and you do this in two days. You can imagine the complexity that it requires to get all the parts at the right place at the right time. You don't want the tail to grow up in the head. You don't want the head to be in the tail. All these things have to be orchestrated in such a thing that this tadpole emerges at one point and swim freely in the pond. So these are the steps. Every single one of these steps represents a very interesting choreography of cells moving one toward another and a whole bunch of very, very amazing stuff. So the other thing I want to tell you about this is so far what I've shown you is just one egg becoming a tadpole. I'm not going to show you a movie that actually two of my boys, I have two sons, Amir and Nima, uh, came in that few years ago and decided to shoot a movie and they wanted to do an experiment and they say, Baba, what should we do? They call me Baba. And I say, well, let's line up some eggs and look at them and see if we can discover something else. So they line up 10 different eggs and now I'm going to set this movie in motion and you're going to see something else that's amazing. So we can see that there is a lot of things going on in these balls and so far things are happening but it's not very clear what is going on. And then gradually or almost suddenly we go from this shape to the baby tadpoles and you can see that all the tadpoles are developing exactly at the same time. And they mingle and they hang out and they party, kissy kissy, <laughs> lovey dovey, what's going on? And then everybody goes home to do their homework. So <laughs> this is an amazing process because each one of these eggs that becomes a tadpole follows exactly the same rhythm. One tadpole does not emerge before the next one. Nobody is left behind. Nobody is ahead of time. And that itself is a big mystery as to how these different eggs know to synchronize their activity to be all at the same time, just like an orchestra, to give rise to a final product. OK. so. This is what we covered so far in just a few little movies from here to the tadpole. I just want to say one or two things about this transition here. And again, as you can see, we're going for something that looks like a fish to something that you recognize as a frog. So that itself also, again, is a very, very mysterious set of events. I'm going to show you in a slow motion how you go from this to this. And you're going to be mesmerized again the same way as I was. So here is our tadpole. Now, watch this. It gradually changes. There are the back legs that are growing up from the back. The arms are sticking out in the front. The head is getting a bit smaller. The tail is getting a bit smaller. Now you recognize the little froglet. The tail is going to disappear. And then the legs and the arms are going further. You recognize the eyes and the head, of course. And now, suddenly, almost by magic, we transform something that looks like a fish to something that looks as beautiful as this. And then, of course, you know what frogs do. They like to hop around and have fun. And you would not be surprised if I told you that there are more than 1,000 species of frogs on planet Earth. Here are some of them. Every single one of them is my friend. I love each one of them. And I could tell you a story about each one of the individuals, not only what they do, but who they hang out with, what kind of activities they engage, and they're absolutely beautiful. Those of you who are interested in seeing some of my friends should come to the booth, and I will show you, and we can talk about it more. But for today, I want to tell you the story of three of my friends, 
and only three of them. So you can see how mom and dad frog actually take care of their tadpoles and how and when do they decide it's time to lay their eggs. The first story is about my friend Rene. Rene is the red-eyed frog, is a tree frog, and he lives in the Amazon. She is ready to lay her eggs, but she does something that's very amazing that most other frogs do not do. She looks around very carefully, hops around. She's looking for a leaf that's absolutely perfect. Meanwhile, dad comes along, and if that wasn't bad enough for Rene, dad takes a piggyback on Rene's back in order to look for the appropriate leaf to lay the eggs. This process can take days sometimes. It's not a matter of minutes or hours, for days after days, until she finds the leaf and she starts laying her eggs and makes a batch of eggs, about 20 or 30 of them. And in this movie, you're going to see again the same thing as you saw. You start getting a tadpole from that egg. These tadpoles are jiggling and wiggling inside. And then something very interesting happens. This is the Amazon, so there are a lot of predators and snakes and other animals who are very hungry to eat eggs and tadpoles. So mom has to come up, Renee has to come up with an amazing strategy. This tadpole is four days old. What happens is that each one of these tadpoles is going to fall like a little drop right underneath the leaf, which happens to be the palm. And if mom doesn't position, there we go. If mom doesn't position the eggs at the right place on the right leaf, then the eggs will fall on the ground and not in water, so the tadpoles can never be freed. And this has to happen so fast that the snake ever, never get to the eggs. And now they are free, and they can swim away from the snake. This is an amazing behavior. This is the simple fact that Rene knows that it's time to lay her eggs, and that she is looking for the right leaf, and she recognizes the right leaf, all of these, when dad is keeping a piggyback ride on her back, is astonishing. So I'm going to tell you the story of my second friend now, Sparky the Space Frog. Did you guys know that frogs have gone to space? Mm. Mm. So let's look at this together. In 1992, there was a space shuttle mission called Space Shuttle Endeavour. His job was to figure out if we can have humans stay in space for a long, long time. And so in order to do that, we, they took some frogs, this is a space shuttle, and they did an amazing experiment. This is Sparky in space. So you can see, it's not very gracious. This is not a ballet in space, but you know, she's doing good. The most amazing thing is that she can lay eggs and make tadpoles. And this is all in space, not on planet Earth. These tadpoles are perfectly fine. They look exactly like any other tadpoles you will find on planet Earth. And that tells you something very interesting. Of course, for the astronaut, that means that, yes, it is possible to generate a tadpole. Therefore, a kid, for humans, if they were to stay long, long time in space, and the distances in the galaxies, as you know, are measured by sometimes thousands of light years. So it's very important to, to establish that. But perhaps the most interesting thing about this experiment, by the way, the frogs that you saw, I contributed to when I was at Berkeley. So my claim to fame here is that the first frogs that went to space were the ones that I handed the mission in Devier, and I was very glad to see them all come back in one piece. But if you really think about it, this experiment also shows that the tadpoles that were born in that mission are the first life form born outside of our planet. Therefore, they should be considered the first aliens. <laughs> they come from outer space and they're back in our planet. OK, there is the story of my, my third story, another friend of mine. Billy the bullfrog. Now, B Billy is very interesting. It, it likes very warm weather. It usually lives in the southern states, Texas, Alabama, and states like that. It's a very interesting thing. Frogs lay the tadpoles in a very small pond of water that's close to a lake, 
just like Rene did. But one male is left behind to watch over all the other tadpoles, and the rest of the frogs move forward. It gets very hot in southern states. So very quickly, that small little pond, the water becomes less and less, and the tadpoles begin to suffer. Billy knows what to do. Gradually comes out of that little pond and starts digging. Starts digging as fast as he can. He has only one hour to make the connection between that little pond where the tadpoles are over there and the big pond where they should be free. And he works and he works and he works and he, and he tries and he tries. Time goes by and it's getting hotter and hotter. Ultimately, Billy can make the connection between where the tadpoles are and where the big water is. So thousands and thousands and thousands of tadpoles are now safe. They can go to the channel that Billy built, and they can finally go to the pond. And you can see how proud, <coughs> how proud Billy is. Yes, he can. So if you think about what this means, it takes human beings years and years of training and going to school to become engineers to figure out how to dig a tunnel. <laughs> Billy is already born with this. So there is somewhere in his mind this amazing ability not only to know when it's time, but to also get his mission done so every single tadpole makes it to the big pond. I have many, many more stories to tell you, but unfortunately, time is running out on me. And what I want to do is to encourage you to go to the booths. As Mark said, there are many, many beautiful booths just across this building. Every single one of my colleagues is going to stun you, but make sure that you also start at my booths because it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> All right? Now, we have time for three questions. And the frog lady that you already noticed when you came in is going to pick three questions from the audience. And I will be happy to answer them, but only three. Frog lady, it's your turn. Do any children have questions for Dr. Brevenlu? How many days does it take for a tadpole to turn into a frog? Oh, this is an amazing question. So I told you that it takes about two days to go from this one egg to become a tadpole. But the distance between a tadpole and a frog varies from one frog to the other. For Rene, for example, it takes about two and a half months. For Billy, it takes about four months, a little bit more depending on how hot it is. So frogs are very sensitive to temperature and they can go very fast if it's hotter and they slow down when it gets cold. But it's always between two to four months. Okay, so it's much slower. What? Animals like to eat tadpoles besides snakes. Oh, that's also a very, very good question. In the Amazon, there are a lot of animals that like to eat tadpoles because tadpoles are really, really yummy. <laughs> so snakes are one, but you know, there are also fishes, there are a whole bunch of other insects. Even sometimes when the tadpoles fall into the pond, even then if they don't swim very fast, it's kind of dangerous for them because there are bigger fishes around that also like to eat tadpoles. But mom is very careful in laying the eggs on a leaf that doesn't have that kind of a fish underneath the pond. So a lot of animals like to eat tadpoles, but tadpoles are smarter than most other animals, so they get away. How many stages are there for the life cycle of a egg to a frog? How many life cycle, how many parts of the cycle are there? Very good. That's an excellent question as well. So it depends on how you count. There is certainly the egg. It starts with the egg. Then it goes to the tadpole. Then that big changes happen called this funny words metamorphosis, which is 
just a change of shape when the legs are coming out and the arms are coming out, the tail. You get a froglet at the end, which is a little baby frog. I will show you when you stop by. And that frog grows up to be a mature frog. So you count this as five independent steps because then the mature frog gives rise to an egg and then we go in circle and circle and circle and circle. I want to thank all of you on the chocolate uh, frog lady. I want to thank all my colleagues, everybody who contributed to that, and I wish you a wonderful afternoon full of adventure and experience.